if God thinks precious thoughts, valuable thoughts, promising thoughts towards me, should I start thinking negative thoughts towards me? No, I'm going to think God's thoughts. That is my desire from today. If you are struggling with intrusive negative thoughts like I've been struggling with, I want you to come to a place of telling yourself, I am not this negative thought that I think and I'm not going to entertain these thoughts again. I hate this powerful quote, you cannot stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest. And this is directed to thoughts. Most times thoughts will fly over your head. So you cannot stop thoughts from flying over your head. But the one you hold on to, the one you take, the one you start building a nest for is the one that would be destructive for you or be of help to you. Which is if you hold on to a toxic negative thought, it is going to be destructive to you. But if you hold on to a positive, confident, hopeful thought, it's going to be healthy and worthwhile for you. This is something I literally told myself that I am not the thought that crossed my mind. I am not how I feel. I might feel a certain way, but that is not who I am. But when I feel a certain way or uh, think a certain way, I'm learning to take it as an opportunity to ask myself, why are you thinking this way? And then I get to learn why I am in that train of thought. Coming to God has made me realize that I can think God's thoughts. Of course, scripture says that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. And my desire is, Lord, I want to come up to this higher lane. Let me think your thoughts. Question one, is God's thought negative? No. A capital N-O. No. God's thoughts are not negative. Psalms 139 verse 17 says, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. So if God thinks precious thoughts, valuable thoughts, promising thoughts towards me, should I start thinking negative thoughts towards me? No, I'm going to think God's thoughts. That is my desire. That is my goal. That is my decision from today. And that is why I'm making today's video so that if you are struggling with intrusive negative thoughts like I've been struggling with, I want you to come to a place of telling yourself, I am not this negative thought that I think and I'm not going to entertain these thoughts again. I am not this anxious thought that comes into my mind. I'm not going to entertain this anxious thought. I am not this fearful thought that comes into my mind because God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because these thoughts then create a feeling. And you start feeling fearful. You start expecting bad. You start expecting evil. And these are negative patterns. They are toxic patterns. They might be patterns that we pick up from our family and bloodline. But then it needs to be broken down. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 6 says, For walking in flesh, not according to the flesh do we war. We walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly but powerful to god for bringing down of strongholds reasonings bringing down and every high thing lifted up against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the christ this is telling you your mind is the battlefield and then there are reasonings, there are strongholds, there are patterns that need to be brought down. And then there are high things, there are high imaginations that need to be brought down. Those toxic ones, legalistic ones and every eye touch that are not in consonance with Christ, with Jesus, with the word of God. So, this is the way to think God's thoughts. If these thoughts do not agree with God, if they do not agree with the word of God, if they are not in obedience to the Christ, these thoughts need to be held captive. And I saw Paul exercise this. 
inside the prison you know when i read through the book of philippians I, it was a beautiful experience it was beautiful to realize this first of all you have to know that paul was in a prison writing this letter to the church in philippians and then he is held physically in a prison but then his mind his brain was not held he was held captive physically but he was so free it was freer than he had ever been because this is the book that he was expressing the need for us to rejoice rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice and finding reasons to rejoice finding reasons to celebrate even when people were against him he said as long as they are preaching christ i'll celebrate and this is what i call the powerful perspective now the perspective of power that Paul exercised here is something that we need to learn as a life lesson so that we can live victorious life and even in our thought life. Now, Paul said something that even though he is bound here in prison, he is not shut up. Now, I will read in the message translation, Philippians 1 verse 19 through 21. Through your faithful prayers and the generous response of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do in and through me will be done. Look at the confidence. Look at the faith. A man in prison is so confident to say everything that God wants to do through me and in me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. He had a desire. I, I want to be out there to continue with the mission that I have, but I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. He said, I am not expecting any shame. Powerful perspective. I am not expecting to be ashamed. This is saying, if you are like me, who sometimes have these negative intrusive thoughts that makes you feel like, oh, maybe you're going to be ashamed. Maybe you're going to fail. Maybe you're not going to do well. You could borrow Paul's words here. I'm not expecting to be ashamed. Not in any way. And he continued, On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known regardless of whether I live or die. Man, this is a perspective of power. Paul is saying, whether I live or die, everything that is happening to me, everything in my situation is not going to make me think according to what I'm experiencing. I'm not going to think in line with what I'm experiencing. I'm not going to align my mind according to what I am facing. I'm not going to align my belief, my expectation according to what I am experiencing. I am in this jail, Paul saying, but then, Everything happening to me only will serve to push forward the mission. This blesses me because I'm like, Paul is a man of faith. If you were to be like me, man, don't you just pray and believe in faith to be out of the prison. But he's like, I may remain here for a longer time. I don't know what to expect, whether they will kill me or not. But I have to hold a perspective of power. Everything happening to me here is not going to hold me bound here in my brain. And that is powerful for me to even look at. I, I, I hope that you get what I'm getting through the scripture. And then he continued, they didn't shut me up. They gave me a platform. You know, they held him because he was proclaiming the message of Christ. And he said, they did not shut me up. They gave me a platform. Because through my being in jail, the gospel will go forward the more. Gosh. <laughs> and when I read this place in this message translation it messed me up and i'm like sometimes we are in prisons to our traumas sometimes we are in prisons to the patterns of our family sometimes we are in prison to the fears of our family the fears that has helped people bound in our family the family patterns and i'm like this whatever prison you might be finding yourself in in your mind whether it's prison to intrusive negative toxic thoughts you are to say like paul they didn't shut me up. They gave me a platform. This prison, this trauma didn't shut me up. This trauma is not shutting me up. This trauma is not the end of the road. It is giving me a platform. Because when I start telling my story, because when I start proclaiming my victory, my story of being a conqueror, this message will go so far. So this 
is a platform. My pain is a platform. My problems are platforms. They are not to shut me up. So this is a perspective of power that I get to realize it. And I hope you get this. And I hope this message is reaching you. And that you'll be blessed by this message here. Paul said, alive, I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his prize. Life versus even more life. I can't lose. <laughs> Gosh, I can't lose. You and I need to come to a place that we believe that. God will do everything he wants to do in our life. Any thoughts that you entertain. You nurse it and allow it to grow. Instead of taking the thoughts, you need to learn how to take it apart and tear it apart. Now, this is what I mean here. Any thought that crosses your mind, like I said, you can't stop the thoughts from crossing your mind, but you can stop it from building a nest. So, when you start holding negative thoughts in your mind and start brooding over them, you are nursing that thought. Because the more you are trying to brood over those negative thoughts and allow those fears, they are only growing. You are entertaining them. You are allowing them to grow because you've taken the thought. Instead of taking it, this is the way to deal with the thought. You do not fight a thought by trying not to think. You fight a thought, a negative thought, by repeating placing it with a positive thought and this is what you do when that negative thought comes you know it's a lie label it a lie and bring in the truth it says you'll be ashamed and god says you will not be ashamed because they that looked unto him their face will brighten and they will not see shame and that is the truth of the word of god they said that because of what had happened to you, that you never see glory, that your glory has been taken away from you. He said, for your former shame, I will give you double honor. That is the truth against the lie of the enemy. Now you can read scripture to allow the truth of God to overwhelm every lie that you've heard over your life. Now you can expect victory. But this is one thing you cannot do. You cannot expect victory and have a losing mentality. For you to win, you must have a winning mentality. For you to have victory, you must have a victorious mentality, which means your perspective and your mindset must be set on being victorious for you to really become victorious. Now, lastly, Paul gave us this line of thought from Philippians chapter 4. He said, finally, believers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Paul is saying... For every single thought that crosses your mind, this is what to do with them. Is it true? Is it honorable and worthy of respect? Is it a noble thought? Is it right? Is it the truth confirmed by the word of God? Is it pure? Is it wholesome? Is it lovely? Is it something that will bring me peace? Because if it brings me to a place of lack of peace, then it's not of God. Then it's not true. Then it's not right. Is it something that is of good repute? Is it admirable? So these are the things to consider. I need you to keep this scripture and put it in your heart. That whenever any thought crosses your mind, you need to ask yourself, if it is true, it says think about it. Center your mind on it. And the word of God is truth. You need to center your thoughts and your mind on the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom because it is truth. So that you can combat the lies and the thoughts of the enemy. Think God's thoughts. This is the way to walk in victory. Your perspective must be set on thinking God's thought because God's thought is positive not negative, not toxic. So you need to be more positive than you are right now. You need to be more hopeful than you are right now. You need to be more expectant than you are right now. Thank you for watching today's video. I am Uwem. So it's my YouTube channel. You would want to, and I hope that you do, 
hit the subscribe button if you've not yet subscribed to this channel and then hit the like button and share this video to someone that you know this video is going to encourage it's my pleasure to have you watch this channel watch this video in particular go and check other videos that i have made and drop your thoughts in the comment section let me know what you think about today's video thank you and god bless you amen